Hello and welcome to the next tutorial on how to make your own virtual 3D museum exhibit. Um, if you remember last time we successfully put our own image, our own painting into a, a pre-made frame material that came from um, the realistic rendering demo. So there is a small error in that material that I wanted to show you guys how to correct. If you look at our painting of the winter scene, you can see these faint brown lines. They're not supposed to be there. So I'm gonna show you um, how to correct that in case you wanted to use this in your own virtual gallery. I mean, because it's very easy. It's just gonna take us a second. So again, we're gonna open the material editor and we do that by clicking on our painting and then moving over to the details panel and clicking on our spyglass right and that finds the material in our content browser and double click on that to open our material editor and here we have our giant spaghetti and node mess um, but honestly again it's just one change it's going to be very easy so what's going wrong is if we look at this major material node and we look at the first input which is base color immediately to the left of that there's a multiply node well the b input is going to the wrong place so um, what we want to do is delete this connector and then connect this B. We want to drag a connector all the way down to this texture sample here, the, the one with the red and the yellow bars. And if you click on that, it says T frame M. So that is where we're going to go. All right, so really simple here. What we do is we move up to this multiplier node. You want to hover your mouse over the B input, hold down the Alt key, and then click on the left mouse button and that deletes the connector that's going to the wrong place. Now to drag, to, to connect it to the right place, again, move your mouse over the B input until you get the crosshair, click down your left mouse button and just drag the connector out. And we're gonna put it into that red input, which is the red channel of this, um, this texture sample. And then we get the green check mark. That means we're all lined up, so we let go. And that's it, that's basically all there is to it. So look, we're gonna click apply, click save for good measure. Then if we go back into our game, or into our environment, our editing environment, you'll notice that the brown lines are gone. So it's all corrected. So that's it, so now we should be good to go. Um, now the next thing that we wanna do is we want our players to actually be able to interact with our, with our objects with our paintings. We want them to basically interact with some kind of trigger that's going to open a window for them so they can see some text and some educational stuff about the painting. So we're going to use what's called a, a UMG widget, which is it's this type of user interface and it's very easy to um, make. So let's go into the content browser and I like to, I'm just going to go to my folder and I'm going to right click in here and we have all these options and I want to scroll down and, to, and select user interface. And at the very bottom here, you'll see something that says the widget blueprint. Okay, so we want to click on that. And we're, it opens up a little um, widget blueprint and I'm going to call it my winter painting widget. Okay, so let's double click on that to open it. Okay, so here we have our blank screen, and this is a really easy thing to use. You'll notice on the left-hand side, there are all these pre, you know, set up um, things that we can, can put in, like buttons, um, check boxes, text, and text box, okay? So um, the first thing that we're gonna do is I want my image to show up, right? So I'm just gonna drag the image, I'm gonna click that, hold it, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, but I want to now select my picture to go in it, right? So I want my winter scene in there. So I go over to the right hand, make sure that I'm clicking on that box and I go over to the right hand panel that says details. And you want, if this is collapsed, you wanna to go to where it says appearance and brush and open that up. And here's where we're gonna select the image that we put in there. So again, I'm gonna go for my met and make sure that you select a texture, not the material that we made. So yeah, so we wanna make sure we get the proportions right. So that's about right. So then if you probably are gonna to wanna to put in a little text, so we're gonna click on the text box, drag that over there, 
And you can make this whatever size you want. Now, to enter text in the text box, again, you go over to the details panel and where it says text blocks, you, um, this is where you enter any kind of, this is where you enter the text you want to appear. Hit enter. Now, if you've got a lot of text, you wanna make sure that you click on this auto wrap, right? So there are tons and tons of tutorials online about how to format and make these look nice. So I'm not gonna go over any of that. I'm just gonna go over sort of basic functionality so we have something to work with. Okay, now the next thing that I need to do is I want there to be a button, a close button, right? So when the player wants to get out, exit, they can just click on it and close. So we're gonna again go over to this left-hand panel, we're gonna select the button, and we're gonna move it over here. Okay, so I'm gonna give this button a name, which is gonna come in handy a little bit later, you'll see, and I'm gonna call it close, right? So this is just helpful if I'm making a lot of these. All right, now if I want, um, so you can actually attach text to this if you want to, by clicking on the text and attaching it to the close button, right? So I'm just gonna put close there. Okay. So this way now I can move this and they both move together. So you can put it wherever you want. Okay, so, but this is a button. I gotta tell this button how to do stuff. So if I scroll down, if I select it and I scroll down, basically when a player clicks it, I want this widget to close. So I'm going to click on this button. And what it's done is it's taken me to the graph tab, right? So if we look here in the upper right hand corner, if you click designer, it takes me back. If you go to graph, here we are on, on clicked. I want you to do something. Okay, so on clicked, um, what I want you to do is we're gonna do a couple things. You can just follow along if you don't really understand, just this should work. Um, we wanna get our crosshairs and click and drag from that arrow. And we're going to search for cast to widget. We're going to cast to widget class. Okay. Here we have a class and we can actually select. So this was called my, here we have, you'll, you should see the name of your widget you just created, my painting widget. Oh no, I called this, uh, what did I call it? My winter painting widget. Okay. So, um, so we're gonna to cast to that object. Um, then we're going to remove from the parent. So again, we drag out and pay attention to this context sensitive box. I mean, this, so this helps searching um, for things that are related to the to this specific function. So we're gonna say, we're gonna search for remove. There we have it, a widget remove from parent. So we're gonna do that, okay. Now, what we have to do is, we haven't done this yet, but um, we have to change how, what the um, input mode. So we're going to set input to game only. Okay, and our target is the player controller. Okay, now we have one last thing to do. I'm gonna see if this will search. Um, it's show mouse cursor, yes. So we, this is something we want to set um, because when we, um, we don't really have a mouse cursor in the game we're walking around uh, and, and we want one when you're in the UMG. So we will set this when players hit the trigger. This will all make sense a little later, I hope. So we're going to set our mouse cursor. Okay, so let's compile, save. Okay, so now we have our UMG, our widget, our thing, our screen that's gonna pop up to display for the players. We've got our painting, but we need a trigger now. We need something to help the player um, interact with that. So uh, what we're gonna do is, this is the simplest way to approach this, um, is we're just going to add a simple box trigger Right, that when the player walks over it, it's gonna make this, this widget appear. 
So if you go over to the left hand side, this is where mine are, we're looking for a tab that says modes, okay? And you might have to search here for um, box trigger or just trigger. And so what we do is we click on that and drag it out into the world, right? And put it right in front of our painting. Okay, just kind of situate it wherever you like. All right, so we have a trigger, but it's not connected. So what we wanna do is we wanna attach some scripting to this that we're going to put in, this case, in, in the level blueprint. So if you select your trigger, right click on it, and select add an event. And what we want to happen is when our player overlaps this trigger, we want something to happen. So we wanna select on actor begin overlap. Okay, so what happens, or what, sh what we want to happen, um, is we want to display our widget. So we click out from the, the arrow, and we're gonna search for um, a create widget. Okay, so we'll create widget. And here we're gonna, which widget do we want it to create? Well, I want it to create my winter painting widget. So I'm going to select that, okay. So now we've told that to create the widget in, in our world, um, and now we wanna add it to our viewport so our player can see it. So we drag out from here, and we search for add to viewport. Okay. So now the next thing that we wanna do, we've added it to the viewport. Um, now we want to make a cursor appear so the player can interact with the buttons, right? So we click out from here, and we wanna say set input, and here we're gonna set input to game and UI. We're gonna lock mouse to the viewport. Okay. So our widget to focus, All right? So what is our widget? Well, it's over here, this widget that we've created. And again, we have to do the same thing to adding to viewport, right? The target is that widget, okay? Now then there's one more thing that we have to add, right? And that's our target for our input, right? So if we click out of here and drag, and then we're going to get the player controller. Okay, that's it. And then we just have one more thing to do, um, is that we've set the input mode to game and the user interface. Now we need to make sure that mouse cursor appears. So I'm gonna drag off of there and show mouse. Now here's where it's, it's not showing up um, because of the context sensitivity. So if I dragged over here and hopefully show, yes. So here we say, here we get the show mouse cursor. Now if you, this is where you might, um, if I was dragging off of here, um, I could turn this off, the context sensitivity, because it, it, it filters what, what your search results show. And just say show mouse, and you see it would show out there. Okay, so we wanna set our show mouse cursor. And again, the target is our player controller. And we wanna make sure we check this box that the mouse cursor shows up. Now you remember we sort of turned this off within our widget when we click close. So we're controlling when that cursor shows, when it turns on and off. So let's compile it. Okay, so let's play this and see if it works. So um, here is my first person shooter with his gun or her gun <laughs> moving very quickly. So I'm going to move up here to my painting. Okay, so I've hit the trigger. And if I click on my close button, there we go. It shuts. So we, our widget is working. It's not very pretty, but it's functional. Okay, so I think that's it for this tutorial. It's pretty long. Um, so next time what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, play around with our player character. So get rid of the gun, for example, and set the walk speed because it's walking really quickly. Um, and then we'll also look at how to make a more complex UMG for a book. So you can actually pick up a book and turn the pages. So that's for next time.